what is the simplest way to build a vertical slice inside a vertical slice architecture. We're not going to be using Mediator or anything similar, I want to discuss a bare bones approach that I think is a good starting point. Let's start by explaining what is vertical slice architecture. The main idea behind vertical slice architecture is organizing your application into features or use cases that are called vertical slices. And a vertical slice represents a self-contained unit of functionality or basically one use case inside of your application. A vertical slice also contains all of the code and the components that are required to implement a specific business functionality. This is how you could visualize a vertical slice architecture where I have an application that contains some horizontal layers. Let's say we have a UI or API layer, a domain layer that contains the business rules, a repository layer that we can use to load the domain objects into memory and store them inside of the database, and we have the database as another component. Another example of this would be the typical way of how we implement the clean architecture with a presentation, application, infrastructure, and domain layer. What vertical slice architecture does is it organizes the components that are needed to implement one feature, for example, creating a new product inside of our system, and let's say this requires an API endpoint, a handler for this specific use case, and the respective repository and domain entities. So we would have all of those defined inside of one vertical slice, and then we could repeat this process for the other features or use cases inside of our application. All of this will make much more sense when we move into the practical examples. But before that, let's discuss what are the actual benefits of organizing your system around vertical slices. And the first benefit is improved cohesion, because you will have all of the components that are needed to implement one use case grouped close together inside of your code base. This also means that the complexity of our system would be lower because we need less moving parts to implement a use case. Another benefit is that you can focus on the business logic inside of that specific use case and you don't have to worry about the interactions between the other vertical slices. Another way to look at this is that we have high coupling within a vertical slice and then we have low coupling between unrelated vertical slices. And another benefit of organizing your code into cohesive subsets is that it's going to make it easier to navigate and maintain a single vertical slice. So when you want to change one feature or one vertical slice, all of the components needed for that vertical slice are going to be close together inside of the code base. So this makes it easier to navigate across your code base and it also makes it easier to maintain and extend a single vertical slice. When you start thinking about the vertical slice architecture on a higher level, you could also apply it across your entire system. So you would be grouping your high level components into slices that encapsulate related functionalities. We could call these components modules, and in this example, I have an event management system with a users module, events module, ticketing module, and an attendance module. So we could look at these modules as distinct vertical slices inside of our larger system. And in fact, this is a representation of the modular monolith architecture. Here's another high level view of the modular monolith, where we have four distinct modules deployed inside of a single application, each with a respective schema in the database, so you can think of these modules as vertical slices on the system level. And actually, this is the application that I'm building inside of my modular monolith architecture course, so if you want to learn more about this, you can check out the link that's going to be in the description under this video. But let's actually move our discussion into a very specific topic that I want to talk about, and that is structuring your vertical slices in the simplest way possible. So let's look at a CRUD example where we have a use case for creating a new product inside of an eShop system. We could organize this use case, or vertical slice, into a static class, and then we could continue adding the components that we need to implement this vertical slice. So one thing that we need is a request object that represents what's required to create a new product. We can also define a separate type that will represent a response that we can return from this use case so that the caller knows that we successfully created a product and it would contain some additional information about the new product. And then the last thing we need is a public API for our use case or vertical slice and this could be a minimal API endpoint where we can easily implement the business logic that's required to handle a specific request, create a new product and store that in the database and then return a response. And what's really interesting is how we can easily evolve this structure and introduce more functionality as we need it. So let's actually jump into a .NET application and I'm going to show you how to implement a very simple vertical slice and then how you can extend it to support more functionalities. This is going to be our starting point for the vertical slices implementation 
and I have a .NET 8 API project set up with Swagger endpoints, an in-memory EF core database context, and an abstraction to easily create API endpoints. All of this is based on the I endpoint interface, which just contains one method that allows me to map my minimal API endpoints using an endpoint route builder and a set of extension methods that allows me to register any implementations of the I endpoint interface as services with dependency injection, which I can then resolve to actually map my API endpoints. So these are the calls to builder services at endpoints and then the map endpoints call here. And then we have just a product entity with an ID name and price because I wanted to use a very simple example and of course an in-memory database context with just one database set. And then let's discuss our actual vertical slice. So I'm going to create a class that I will call create product. You would name this however you would want to name your vertical slice or feature or use case. The example I want to show you is organizing your vertical slice into a static class. So I said that the first thing we need is a request object. So we can use a record and let's call this just a request. And because this is going to be a nested type in the create product class, we can omit any redundant names. We just need a name and a price to be able to create our product. And then we can move into defining our actual endpoint. So this is going to represent the public API of our use case and I'm just going to call this an endpoint and I will implement the I endpoint interface. This interface comes with one method called map endpoint and what we want to do is call the respective map method on the endpoint route builder. In this case I want to call map post because this will be an endpoint for creating a new resource and then I need to define my request delegate and for example this could be a static method inside of my vertical slice. So let's make this method return I result because this is what is returned from my minimal API endpoint and let's just call this the handler method. In the method arguments I'm going to specify the request object which is going to be bound from my request body and then I can inject any services that I need from dependency injection and I can go ahead and inject the database context directly and then let's specify this as the argument for the map post method. I'm also going to tag this so that we can group our endpoints in the open API schema and let's call this tag products and now I want to focus on the handler method. What we want to do here is to create a new product entity so let's create a new product and then we can just set the respective properties. So we can set the name from the request name and the price from the request price. This is all great. And then the next thing I want to do is say context products add and add the product to the change tracker. Then I want to call context save changes. And finally, I want to return a response. So let's say we want to return results OK, and this would be sufficient. If we want to return a specific response object, then we need to introduce a respective contract. So let's add another record called response. And for example, this could have the same properties. However, we can also introduce the identifier of the new product. So let's return a new response. And then we just need to provide the values from the product entity. So let's go ahead and pass those along. And this would be the bare bones approach to implement a vertical slice. Now we could also make this asynchronous. I could make this return a task of I result change this to save changes async. Of course, we would have to make this an async method and then await the call to save changes async. And we don't need to change anything in our minimal API registration. A few things to note here. We aren't using mediator to implement CQRS. We can implement this in a simple way by just defining a request and response object and our handler method. And then we can implement our vertical slices so that we logically separate writing and reading data. What about some cross-cutting concerns like validation? Well, you could use, for example, fluent validation, which is an approach I like to use. And let's say I define a public sealed class called validator. We can implement the abstract validator base class and I can just specify my request object. And then inside of the constructor of the validator, we can define the specific rules that we want to enforce. So let's say I want to enforce a rule that the name is not empty. And then let's add another rule for the price. For example, that the price must be greater than zero. How do we use this validator? Well, we can go to our handler and inject another dependency. We could inject this with the I validator and we specify the request object. And then we can give this a name of validator. And all we would do is validate the request before creating the product. So we can say await validator validate async and we can pass in the request object. This would return a validation result. And if the validation result is not valid, 
then we want to return some sort of bad request. So let's say we return results, bad request, and you could map this to a problem details response or something similar. I'm just going to return the actual validation failures. And this is pretty much all it takes to implement validation. Of course, you could treat this as a cross-cutting concern, which it is, and move it into some sort of middleware. The mediator library makes this very easy to do with the pipeline behavior abstraction because it's strongly typed. With middleware, we would have to do a little bit more work. Because we introduced another service, we would also need to register this with dependency injection. So we would say builder services add validators from assembly. And then we could specify the current assembly by saying type of program and pass in the assembly value. And now we can start the application and check out our vertical slice in action. So if I open up the Swagger UI, I can see the one endpoint that I have. And let's say I send this request, which contains a price of zero. I will get back a bad request response, which contains the validation failure. And obviously you can omit most of this information from an API response. It's just an example, but let's say I set the price of one and this is some new gadget that I want to create. And then we can create this and get back a proper response. The next thing we want is a few more CRUD endpoints that I'm going to add behind the scenes. So this is what our application code look like when we introduce the other vertical slices. For example, here is a vertical slice for getting a single product by the identifier. Then we have a vertical slice for getting all of the products and mapping them to a specific response. We could also have a vertical slice for removing a product and then a vertical slice for updating a product. Each of these use cases would be self-contained with a respective request or response object, an API endpoint representing the public API of this use case, and then the business logic would be encapsulated inside of the handler method. Of course, this isn't the only way you can structure a vertical slice. I showed you this approach where we have a top level static class that is grouping together the required components to implement one use case. You could also organize this into separate files they will be grouped under a folder which carries the name of the vertical slice. But you just have to respect the main idea of placing related components close together inside of the source code. Another remark I want to make is about sharing code between vertical slices. And a good sign that you need something like this is when you start to see duplicate code between vertical slices. And a very simple way you could do this is with a refactoring where you would extract the code that is duplicated across your slices and that you want to share into another class. You could instantiate that class inside of your vertical slices and then just call the respective method that contains the shared functionality. Now, obviously, we're only scratching the surface about the vertical slice architecture with a simple CRUD example, and I'm going to expand on this idea in some of my future videos. If you want to learn more about vertical slice architecture, then you should watch this video next. Also, check out my clean architecture and modular monolith courses if you want to improve your skills. And until next time, stay awesome.